Hey guys, what's up? I'm here with Tim from the, uh, uh, he, uh, he's in the Dance Cabin Dance Band who we interviewed before and he's in another band, so we decided to do the interview again, Wolf and Bear Band. Oh yeah, thanks for having me back. Now, many people in the last interview didn't enjoy the interview, so I thought this is a chance to do a good job and, um, maybe avoid can, yeah. some of the... We can redeem ourselves on this, on this tour... My fun shit is like the bass synth wah. So that's a green pedal. Right. Green. So what does that do? So that's with the pedal off or is that the pedal on? That's on. Behind the gear. So I just like get to play around with different sounds. Well, it sounds very, I mean, it sounds pretty bad. Behind the gear. What is this box? This, this doesn't look like a normal amp. This looks like a, a crappy speaker that they yeah. play at like a karaoke club. What All is right. that? For the sake for the sake of this, we couldn't have our amps up here, so we just decided to take a PA speaker and run it through the Kemper, which I bet you're so not familiar with. But like right there, we're playing through a amp profile that I made of an amp that I don't bring on tour, and I think it sounds damn good. So I don't so. So this is just a white box, and your and the white box is plugged into this crappy speaker. Right. So what is the white box doing? It just gives me like a gives me an amp sound. So if I wanted to do a bass amp thing, I got that. But I don't understand. You're saying if I want to play through an amp, but you don't have an amp because this is just a white box and this is a black speaker. Behind the key. So do you have an amp when you're playing on stage? Yeah, for this tour, I have a solid state Mark bass amp. It's about the weight of like a hardcover book, which is good for me. <laughs> well, sometimes those books can be very heavy. I remember when I was in high school and I had to carry around all the textbooks, and it really hurt my back and I developed scoliosis. Behind the gear. The yellow base. Base, yellow base. Black. Uh, black EMG uh, active pickups. I got them. They're making me another one in black with the DGD pickguard on it. Though I'm really excited for that. So. And what is DGD? Dance Gavin Dance. That's the other band you're in. Yeah, yeah. So the one that's better than this one. Right. Behind the key. Yeah, sh shout out to Schechter. That's they're the only ones that hook it up with anything. Well, they might be a very cool company. They're probably not as good as some of the other ones, but they're probably very very cool, good company. Yeah, I would agree. Yeah. So I'll email them about getting some kind of <laughs> gear from them because it sounds like they give their stuff out for free. Behind the key. So let's talk about some of these cool pedals that you have here. Yeah, um, I have a whammy here. Um, it's a big it's, red yeah. pedal. So what does that do? It's uh, it's like pitch shifter. Like it's like it makes it like octave up and down. So it sounds kind of weird and funny. Yeah. Behind the gear. So what else is next? Um, this is the the Miku stomp. <laughs> So what is that sounds like a voice. Yeah, I, I So can you play that same thing without the pedal on? Sure. So that just sounds like a crappy guitar. Right. And then what does it sound like with the pedal? So that sounds like a girl talking. Yeah. So you could use that to like if you were maybe like like a disabled person, like a mute person, you could give them one of those pedals and train them on a guitar, and then they could play that in order to speak to people. Yeah, I bet I think she could only say like one thing. It's fine if you want to use it for like a rock show or whatever, but I think if you did find like a more hu humanitarian way to use it, like the way I suggested, that would be a very good thing to do. Yeah, that would probably even be better than what I'm using it for. Yeah. Behind the key. What songs are you using that for? I don't know. Um, so you just have it on here. Why? Um, cause it's, cause it's funny. I thought it was funny. Behind the key. Do you think your band is better or worse than Led Zeppelin? Definitely worse. Why? I don't think, uh, I just don't think we're as good. We're, we, you know, 
but maybe you will be as good if you keep practicing. You know, if I were to interview the guitar guy from that band, I think the the talking pedal, he wouldn't have it there if he wasn't using it. But you just say, oh, I have it there, but I'm not using it. But they're really good, and you say you're not as good. So maybe the first step would be getting rid of that pedal. I, maybe, yeah. Behind the gear. Hey guys, how's it going? Chef Dolce Vino here from the Effects and Pedals Mess Hall. Today we're here at CI Records in Lancaster, PA, which is Amish country. So we're going to be making a traditional Amish dish, Sioux style. It's a uh, uh, Amish friendship soup, which is traditionally made with beef, but uh, we're going to take some ingredients that we bought at the gas station and uh, some leftovers from Shady Maple Smorgasbord and uh, make this soup. So let's see what happens. So we're going to start with the soup. Uh, you're just going to want it's your base. You're just going to pour it in. You just pour it in there. And then what you're going to want to do is dilute it with a little bit of water. We all bought this at a gas station. Uh, we're going to take our toppings from the Shady's Maple Smorgasbord. We have a uh, sausage. What you're going to want to do is, you might want to, for the sausage, just break it up and put it in. You're just going to want to open it up and dump all the meat out and the skin. Tastes good. And then next we have some uh, some bones for taste. Some uh, half-eaten chicken. And, uh, looks like we have a little bit of uh, what could have been a some type of cheesecake with some green beans on there and a fry. Um, and then we're gonna want to dilute with a little bit more water just to make it right. We're gonna throw this in the microwave for uh, seven minutes, and we're gonna see what goes on. Have you guys ever heard of the uh, Amish friendship soup? No. Um, so we made an on-the-go version with leftovers from Shady's Maple Smorgasbord um, and some soup we bought at a gas station. So I was wondering if you would like to try some. There's a, yeah, thanks, man. Yeah. Oh, oh my goodness. What's in this? Um, so there's a sausage in there. There's some green beans. Um, there's some uh, chicken that has been uh, you know, bites. Would you like some? I actually, I wish that I was hungry so that I could eat this now. Unfortunately, I'm not. However, I'm definitely gonna take this home and eat it later. I think Tim might like a bite. It's actually not even that bad. And that's eating on the go when you're on tour. This, I don't know how I feel about that, but. That was a sausage. What you do is you squeeze the sausage out and then you drop the skin mm. in for taste. I wish I had the balls to eat that one. Behind the gear. Hey guys, what's up? Billy Cardigan and I'm here with. C Cameron Nunez. Cam Cameron Nunez from the Wolf, uh, the Wolf and Bear Band. Behind the gear. What does the next one do? That's a, a compressor that I forget to turn on all the time. So that makes it sound the same, but it just adds a buzz, which can be very cool if you want to have a kind of rock punk rock thing. You know, on all those old punk albums, the, the guitar is always very loud and buzzing, and it sounds really crappy. So, that if you want to use the Keeley compressor, that's how you can get that crappy kind of buzzy sound onto your guitar. That's a very cool pedal board setup you have here, and I think you're going to really be able to rock out and use this good to play for the people in Lancaster, the Amish people, and the regular people. It's gonna, they're going to not know what hit them in a good way. So, what was your name? Cameron. Cameron Nunez. Get on up behind the gear. Hey guys, what's up? This is John Paul Guernico. I'm here hanging out with some some of the members of Wolf and Bear. What are we working with in this unit? I put some pineapple and mango stuff in here, and it tastes it tastes like a smoothie. So you mix two of the two of the flavors. Exactly. Okay, nice. I like to do that as well. I kind of yeah yeah. I'll hit this up. Thank you. <laughs> So, good vape. Good job. Yeah, 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 yeah. Pride myself on blowing some fat clouds. What are we working with over here? All right, I got the I got the coffee one in this like copper looking guy. It's perfect for me. I don't know why I wanted to spend more money. I don't know. I just like it because it's copper, you know. And I didn't. Want it's a really cool color. Exactly. I didn't want to learn how to do to build a rig. So this is perfect for me. Yeah, I feel like a lot of the. Do you go to the same vape shop uh, consistently? Yeah, the only one I go to is like right by my studio. Yeah, I feel like you form a pretty strong bond between the 
whichever vape shop that you go to, the owners, the management, the clientele there. I don't know. Do you guys feel that w the same way? I feel that way just because, yeah, yeah. Same with, uh, there's like a weed store next to the studio. I'll only ever go to that one. I'm never going to get on Yelp and look for another one since I know where it is. Same goes with sandwiches, burrito places, and now vape stores. No, I wouldn't necessarily recommend that. If Starbucks started doing their own vape juice, I'd be very on board. Yeah, well, I have found it a good tool to make friends and win over the respect of your peers. You know, real recognizes real in this vape game. And, uh, you know, I've definitely made quite a few friends. Oh, wow, that's, that's the mother load right here. Look at this. Look at that. All the paraphernalia goes in here. This is many, many ounces of juice. It smells amazing, actually. Here, fuck with it. Just, just, uh... Oh, that smells like a pina colada. Do you think you could use that in a pinch if you ran out of cologne or uh, deodorant? I want to know, do you ever vape while you're on stage performing? I want to, but I also don't want to be called douchebag any more than I'm already called. So I don't. Do you think that's uh, a label or a that's being attached to vapists around the globe. I feel like vaping is like weirdly passe now. Even in LA, you would think like six months to a year ago, everybody be vaping and I was just there and I felt like I was the only guy vaping. And I don't care, but it is weird. I don't know what the stigma is anymore. I can't even, I can't even figure it out, but that's not gonna stop me from doing what I do, which is vaping. <laughs> Facts and Pedals, Arena Corner. This has been a Shy Boys production.